Merry Christmas! Let the madness begin. Which one seed is about to get Coles in their NCAA tournament stocking? You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, the only daily national college hoop show out there. We are your co-hosts. This is Andy Patton. I'm Isaac Shade. It is great to be with us where you're joining us at the place to get your college basketball content every single day. We'd truly like to thank you for making us your first listener watch. And Andy, a big special shout out to all those everydayers out there. Great to have you all with us. By the way, very quickly, as we get into talking about the first big day of the tournament, if you're not part of the Locked On College Basketball Discord community, folks, you are missing out. The link for that's in the show notes. It's free to join. We'd love to have you. All right, this episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Why don't you take the Nissan Rogue or Pathfinder or Armada and go find your next big adventure? Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Oh, Andy. Folks, if you're listening to this earlier on Thursday, you still got a little bit of time to get into our bracket challenge. The link for that is also in the show notes. We'd love to have you. It's on ESPN. We'd also like to say a big word of congrats to Grambling on logging their first ever NCAA tournament win. That's some money for the conference. As we're recording, there's 82 seconds left in Colorado State, Boise State, or Colorado, excuse me, Boise State. So we don't yet know that outcome. The buffs are right now up by three. Andy, it's going to be a fun conversation today. It's kind of a superlative-y, question -y kind of show. At the end of the show, the last segment, we'll get into looking at what's ahead on Thursday. But we're going to start the top of the show at the top, the one seed line, and a question that people always love to ask, which of the one seeds is going to be the first to fall out of this tournament? I really hate to say this. <laughs> I, I <laughs> okay, do. you don't even have to answer. That alone tells us what. Right. Right. Every single person now knows what team that I'm going to pick here. Uh, but it is matchup specific for me. I, I'm taking the Boilermakers partly because I think UConn is a really, really difficult team to beat. And even though I believe for some reason the committee put them in the most difficult region uh, with Iowa State, who I think is a really, really good two seed. Illinois is playing well right now. Auburn, San Diego State. It is a tough, tough region for UConn. But UConn has played exceptional all season long with very, very little lapses. And right now they're healthy. They're coming into this tournament rolling like I think UConn's going to do great. I think Houston and Carolina have pretty favorable draws. I think there's a pretty good opportunity for both of those teams to be in the Elite Eight, to be in the Final Four. Whereas for Purdue, while this is a better version of last year's team, while I am very confident that they are not going to lose to a 16 seed, although the narrative around that would be absolutely extraordinary if that were to happen. Oh. I just look at this region and I look at a, a five-seeded Gonzaga team that I think has a good opportunity to be in the Sweet 16 thanks to the McCuller injury at Kansas. Uh, I look at a Utah State team that I think is under -seeded. I don't think they're better than Purdue, but I think they're capable of beating Purdue. So I, I see Purdue as the most likely to lose in the round of 32, even though I'm not feeling incredibly confident that that will happen. I feel like they're the most likely to lose in the Sweet 16 because they're either playing Gonzaga or they're playing Kansas, which without McCuller is if Kansas wins those games without McCuller, they're doing something right. And they're going to challenge Purdue in that situation too. So, and then even beyond that, if they get into that, you know, if they get into the elite eight, they're playing either Tennessee or Creighton, both most likely one of those two teams, I should say, but either way, very, very tough matchups for, for Purdue. So it's, it's matchup specific more than anything else. I'd love to see Matt Painter get over the hump and quiet the haters, myself included at this point. But uh, I, I see them as the most vulnerable one seed based on how the seeding shook out here. You're just being a realist. You're not being a hater. That's all it is. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I love your point there. A better version of last year's team, because not only are Braden Smith and Fletcher mm -hmm. Lawyer older, man, I think Lance Jones might mm -hmm. be the linchpin of making them better. There's yeah. just a, a level of athleticism that he's brought to what they do coming over from Southern Illinois. So uh, really like that. Wow. Colorado just got a end of shot clock put back from mm -hmm. Eddie Lampkin. 
uh, to go up by five with about 30 seconds left. That's crazy. Okay, Andy, my choice is is kind of funny. It depends because I have in my bracket UConn and Purdue both losing in the same round in the Elite Eight. So really for me, uh, the answer to this question all depends on the Elite Eight schedule of who <laughs> plays first. But since you went Purdue, I'm going to go UConn. And Andy, this is less about UConn because they're f- phenomenal. Yeah. It's more about what I think Iowa State is doing. What what I just watched them do to Houston, I believe they can do to UConn as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I think that is a real possibility. And I'm not saying that UConn can't beat them. Clearly they can. They are yeah. the best team in America, Andy. But I've got Iowa State in my bracket. So I'm going to say uh, UConn is my answer to this question. Now, Andy, our, our conversation here is obviously a very natural segue to talking about the Final Four. Because we, uh, throughout this week, have previewed each region, and we've given our winner from each region, but we've not advanced it beyond that. So let's remind the good folks who we have for our final four picks, and then pick those final three games of the 2024 college basketball season. So I got UConn. Uh, Obviously, I talked about that already. I got UConn coming out of that East region even. I I totally understand the argument for Iowa State. I think they are playing really great basketball right now. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I think they'll they'll be the team they end up playing in the Elite Eight, but I do got the Huskies uh, in the Final Four. I got them taking on Baylor, the three seed coming out uh, of the West region there, uh, getting past Arizona, getting past North Carolina, Scott Drew's team back in the final four. I'm a little concerned about uh, some of their depth issues. Uh, Langston Love is not going to be able to play in the tournament. We found that out. So that's going to be a a problem for them. But I still like this team's overall talent. And then on the other side of the bracket, I got Houston and Creighton. We're going one verse three and one verse three. Uh, The Cougars. Absolutely phenomenal basketball that they've been playing outside of that big loss to the Cyclones. This team is really good. I like the draw for them in that region. Creighton, I, th- I think, you know, we've, we've talked about them a handful of times having some depth issues, uh, really having four good starters. Mason Miller hasn't contributed much offensively to that team. But when Shireman and Alexander and Kalk and Ashworth, when those guys are doing what they do, this team is nearly unbeatable. I like them over Tennessee. I think they like them over the, the potential Gonzaga, Kansas, Purdue, whoever comes out of the top side of that region. So give me give me one verse three, one verse three. Uh, give me the one seeds winning those two games. I know it's boring. It's always boring. But we talked about it on the bracket uh, when we did our, our keys to p- picking a bracket. You go chalk towards the end. You go chalk at the end. To me, I got one versus one, UConn versus Houston. I got the Huskies repeating first time since Florida in 2006, 2007. Give me Danny Hurley's team back to back. Wow. Love it. Andy, by the way, I looked it up. We, we've we not looked it up now that the regular season is over. Mason Miller, uh, whom I like to call Goose now, reason being he had seven goose egg games this year, zero points. Okay, Andy. Uh, I've already kind of alluded to it that I have both Purdue and UConn losing in the Elite Eight. And the teams that I have them losing to are Iowa State in the East region and then Tennessee in the Midwest region. So uh, against Iowa State on that left side of the bracket, I've got North Carolina coming out of the West. And then out of the South region on the right side of the bracket, I got Houston coming out. So Iowa State versus North Carolina. I've got the Tar Heels advancing to the national championship game. Houston versus Tennessee. Congrats to the Vols on their first ever Final Four. But Houston's going to the national championship game against the Tar Heels, where Kelvin Sampson's crew is going to take home that national championship. Not only, Andy, do they win the Big 12 in their first regu- their regular season Big 12 in their first season in the Big 12, they're going to take home the national championship in their first season in the Big 12. What a story that would be. So, Andy. That said, you've got UConn. I can only imagine you've got a Husky as your mop, and I can only imagine that I've got a Cougar as my (laughs) mop. So, Andy, hit me with your Final Four mop. Yeah, I'd go with Tristan Newton in this situation. There's a lot of players that you could pick for UConn. Part of the reason that they're so difficult is because of how balanced they are. Any given night, Donovan Klingon can be the guy who beats you. Uh, Alex Caravan can be the guy who beats you. Cam Spencer, Stephon Castle. But it's rare that UConn doesn't have a big game from Tristan Newton. And for them to be in a position to win the national championship, it's because Tristan Newton is putting up triple-double caliber numbers. He's shooting efficiently. He's playing good defense. If they, if this is the specific – if my bracket is 100% perfect, which it very obviously is not. Wow. That you would, would require, be the first person ever. First person ever, right? <laughs> that would require Newton to have beat up on Ray J. Dennis at Baylor and Jamal Shedd at Houston. If he outperforms both those guys, he's your mom. 
Well, Andy, it's a great call. Let's remember, in the national championship game last year, he was the leading scorer in the game, 19 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. Uh, could very well be a great call. Uh, I've got Houston winning, and so I'm going to go with Jamal Shedd. I mean, he's a first-team All-American on just about every uh, um, team, every group that's announced their All-American so far this year. It just makes sense. Um, kind of the same thing you said with Tristan Newton. He's the head of the snake, whatever you want to call it. Um, he's the the guy that makes this team go for Kelvin Sampson. So that is my pick. Well, Isaac, three years in a row, we have had a 15 seed upset a two seed. It's happened 11 times historically, three years in a row. Could this year be the fourth? And which of those two seeds might be on upset watch this weekend? We're going to tell you. Right after I tell you that today's episode of Locked On College Basketball is brought to you by Nissan. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like all of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. We're going with my pick for the national champions, Yukon Huskies. They can only be described as a Nissan Armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they have landed that top seed in the NCAA tournament. They're one of the favorites to win it all, despite having four of the six Power Six Conference champions standing in their way in the East region. So folks, take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets, which we will all be doing by, oh, I don't know, two hours from now, Andy, because <laughs> FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset like we're about to talk about or a one seed like we just talked about, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick Who's going to win it all? If you're wanting to bet on one of those seeds to take home a trophy, one of those one seeds, odds favor UConn at plus 370, then Houston plus 550, Purdue plus 700, and UNC, North Carolina, is the least likely of the one seeds, according to FanDuel, at plus 1,800. So if you want to get in on that action, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until one of those teams or somebody else cuts down the nets. All right, Andy, we move from talking about the very tip-top teams to talking about the teams that are just right underneath them. As you alluded to, you didn't allude to it, you outright said it. <laughs> In each of the last three tournaments, we've had a 15 upset a two. That, to me, is bonkers, Andy, yeah. that that's reality, but it is. And as far-fetched as it seems, that's enough of a little bit of a sample size there to start seeing that become more regular. Will it be every year? We don't know that, but three years in a row, if it happens in a fourth, Andy, which is the most likely of the four 15s to upset a two? This is, it's fun to talk about this because it's really hard to project. If people, if, if 15 seeds were more likely to beat two seeds, the, when you're looking at the Ken Palm data, looking at the records, looking at the strength of schedule, there wouldn't be such a big disparity. It makes it difficult to look at what are some keys, what are some things that these teams could do. But ultimately, as we know, these two or these 15 seed runs are, are often random. They're not super easy to project. Having said all of that, Looking at these 15 seeds, one that stands out to me a little bit more than the rest is Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers taking on Marquette. Uh, Marquette, again, we've talked about Tyler Kolek a handful of times. He's healthy and he's going to play. That is what we, the, the messaging that we're hearing. That is everything that, that is being discussed. And I believe that 100%. But I also know that oblique injuries don't just vanish. And so the odds of Tyler Kolek feeling 100%. I don't know. They might be a little slim. I, I'm not there. I'm not talking to him, but but it's it stands <laughs> to reason to me that he may not be quite at full strength. Western Kentucky, they play at the top tempo in the country, according to Ken, to Ken Palm. This team flies wow. up and down the floor. That is what they do. They are a decent rebounding team, which is a key, key, key thing for any undersized, underseated team to potentially pull off an upset. Uh, so to me, you're talking about a fast-paced team, a good rebounding team, a decently efficient offensive team going up against a Marquette team that has been without Tyler Kolek, that was briefly without Oso Iguodaro, that had that season-ending injury to Sean Jones. Like, 
there's enough of a factor here. I, and I know there's a narrative around Shaka and Marquette, uh, obviously from losing early in the tournament last year as well. So there's enough kind of going on there that I feel like this is the most likely. Now, I did not pick any 15 seeds in my bracket. I do think Marquette <laughs> wins this game. But if you're asking me who's the most likely to pull it off, give me the Hilltoppers. Yeah, we're not into that territory where it's like a a, a bracket making principle where you're like, well, you got to take 212 right yeah, now. Right. No, absolutely not. Um, Andy, that's a great choice, Western Kentucky over Marquette. I'm going to go South Dakota State over Iowa State, which is funny because I have Iowa State in my final four. But <laughs> um, when you're looking for something to go on, South Dakota State has some good offensive shooting numbers. They're 19th in the nation in effective field goal percentage. Uh, ball game. Colorado is moving on, Andy, over Boise State. There you go. 60 to 53. That wraps up the slashy games. Um, anyway, back to South Dakota State. 19th in effective field goal percentage, 18th in two-point uh, two field goal percentage, and 47th in three-point field goal percentage. So it's one of those games where if they can get the shots, continue to be effective with them, do those kind of things, um, look, Iowa State is going to pause, prove – all sorts of problems mm -hmm. because they're the number one rated defensive camp pump. And I hear that, but in basketball, you can just have a day sometimes and you never know what might happen very quickly. Uh, you know, we had talked about in our five keys to winning uh, your bracket pool. You want to look at the odds because they know what's going. Arizona is 19 and a half over Long Beach state, Iowa state 15 and a half over South Dakota state. Andy, Picked the smallest odds, Marquette 14 and a half over Western Kentucky. Weirdly, we still don't have a Tennessee St. Peter's line. I don't know what's going on there. So um, if, if you're one that just based on the on the line is looking at it, then go with Andy's Western Kentucky pick. Well, Isaac, I want to talk a little bit too. One thing that we saw last year in the NCAA tournament was the fact that the Final Four did not have any one seeds. It did not have any two seeds and it did not have any three seeds. That is exceedingly, exceedingly rare. Ah, uh, exceedingly. Ah, yeah, see, there you go. I did not mean to do that, but I appreciate, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, what could that look like this year? Because to me, yeah. one of the things that I'm seeing, like we have a lot of parody this year. We've talked at, at length throughout the season. For those of you who have been everyday listeners, you've heard us talk about the ranked teams going on the road and losing to unranked opponents. It's a, it was a phenomenon this year that happened like 25% more often than it historically does. It was an insane amount of upsets. It was really fun regular season. Welcome to those of you who maybe didn't pay attention to it. It, it really was fantastic. And I think it does make us feel like, are, is there more opportunity for upsets even more than usual in this March Madness? But there was also like three really, really, really good teams in UConn and Mark, or excuse me, UConn and Purdue and Houston. And it just feels really hard to pick none of them being in the final four. Like it just feels unlikely that that's the situation. And if you are picking those, you know, against them, like you did, you pick somebody like Iowa State, you pick somebody like Creighton, somebody like Tennessee. So having said that, you're always expecting, nobody expects all the one seeds to lose early, but yet it, it does occasionally happen. So looking at it this year, I tried to fill out like a, a manufactured hypothetical bracket yeah. that doesn't have any one, two or three seeds. And I really don't love it. Like I'm looking at it right <laughs> now and I'm like the odds of, I mean, it's just, sure it could happen. Here's the, here's the one that I filled out. It had San Diego State being the team coming out of the East region. Uh, and I think that is, plausible that yeah. that could happen it's an experienced yeah. team it's a deep yeah. team they've been there before maybe they could upset UConn and Iowa Where State just goes nuts yeah exactly it's it's possible uh, I don't love any of the four the four or five Alabama St. Mary's coming out of the west I don't love that I'm not a Clemson guy I pick mostly upsets in that region so for me if it's a not one two three seed uh, I'm going Nevada the 10 seed there yeah. maybe they can get on an absolute sure. heater sure. uh ups, pull an upset in the first round over Dayton beat Tommy Lloyd in Arizona and maybe make a run there on the other side I got six seeded Texas Tech versus a five seeded Gonzaga team I could see Gonzaga doing it uh, I, I do think that that is more plausible than some of the other ones granted they're a five see the one of the highest you can be here uh texas tech i like them over duke i think duke loses early uh, i think wisconsin loses to james madison so i guess go with the red raiders but i yeah it's hard for me to imagine there's not any of the top three seeds in the in the final four so and here's what's interesting too andy is not only did you not have top three you I didn't have top four. pick a four seed either so <laughs> auburn alabama duke 
Kansas are mm-hmm. all out of this uh, scenario as well. So this would be even more bonkers. No top four seeds in the final four. I'm here for the anarchy. I'm not in love with the four seeds this year. Like just, just you saying them out loud. I'm like, man, that is not a group. Like they're not bad teams, but like. I like they, Auburn the best of the group. Yeah, I think I do too. But Auburn's in the toughest region, which is. That's right. Oh, I just mean of, like in yeah. a vacuum. Oh, right. In a vacuum, I do like Auburn. I, I, Alabama, I, the defense concerns me. Duke has not played well as of late. So, like, yeah, I, I think Auburn's the team I like the most. But that's a, that's a somewhat underwhelming group of four seeds, at least in my opinion. Yeah, very much so. All right, Andy, one more quick conversation to have before we get to Thursday. And we do need to be quick on this one. Uh, one of the things w- that we've seen is since the field has expanded from 64 to 65 to 68, We've had a couple of those slashy teams advance on beyond their slashy game. Uh, In 2011, which was the first year, right, Andy, of that, if I'm remembering correctly, VCU, coached by Shaka Smart, rode it all the way to the Final Four. We had another Final Four. That was UCLA in 2021. What a crazy run that was. Uh, LaSalle made the Sweet 16 in 13. Tennessee made the Sweet 16 in 14. Syracuse made the Sweet 16 in 18 and uh, last year FDU went all the way to the round of 32. So Andy, that said, which slashy team will win again and how many games will they win? So the, uh, the possibilities are Wagner who plays North Carolina, Colorado state who plays Texas, Colorado who will play Florida Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Grambling who will play Purdue. Yeah, I got to go with the Rams, Colorado State. Uh, that team, they rolled over Virginia, and that game said a lot more, I think, about Virginia than it did about Colorado State. But I think there are people who watched the Rams for the first time and were like, oh, this seems pretty good. Yeah, the Mountain West is good. There's six teams in the NCAA tournament. It's not random. It's because that is a really good conference, and they played some really great basketball this year. And I could see them beating Texas. I think I have that in my bracket. Uh, then they get a Tennessee team, and that's, that's interesting there. It's a possibility. I, I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be surprised, but I wouldn't be shocked. I would also love if that happened because it could set up Colorado State playing Creighton. Uh, and for those of you who are following in the non-conference, Colorado State beat Creighton by 21 points way back in November, December, whenever it was. So certainly could set up a very intriguing matchup if Colorado State goes on that deep of a run. But I'm not sure I expect them to go that far, but I do expect them to to at least win a first-round game. Yeah, man, I, gosh, I forgot what a beatdown that was, Colorado State over Creighton. <laughs> Andy, I'm going to go with their state mates, who we just finished off while we were recording here. Give me Colorado. Now, Andy, let me give a caveat first. Colorado has not been as nearly as good as I expected them to be this year. I just thought that that trio of NBA talents that they have in Tristan De Silva, KJ Simpson, and Cody Williams, the freshman, would just absolutely eat up the Pac-12. They've had injury concerns, so that's part of it. And Eddie Lampkin, who is a dude, right, that that you and I have both loved. Um, I like this pick because if they can get by Florida, I think there's a better shot of them advancing another game if... Tyler Kolek isn't in a good way, but if he is, I l- would love to see a KJ Simpson, Tyler Kolek matchup, dude. How fun would that be? So um, give me Colorado as that team. Isaac, we got 16 NCAA tournament games in action on Thursday, the first day. So excited. Many of you are listening likely as the games have already gotten underway, which means I am on my couch watching as many screens as I possibly can right now. Isaac and I are going to talk and about- you only our... need four. You only need four That's screens. true. You only need four. I'm going to have them all up. Maybe I'll get some NIT games on too. Why not, right? <laughs> we are going to talk about our favorite matchups in each of the four pods, including talking about some potential upsets for all of you to keep your eyes on. But first- I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV, and it provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's March Madness, the opening of the MLB season, you're going to want to have your Fire TV. And I have Amazon Fire Sticks on every single TV in my house. I love the layout. I love the user experience. I even love the remote, which has buttons that take you directly to Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, or Hulu. 
and Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels, which deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, including us here at Locked On. You can go check out Locked On College Basketball, any of the other fantastic Locked On shows for free on Fire TV. They also let you dive deep into the in-game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on the latest in the world of sports. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels yet, you should. Trust me on this one. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. All right, Isaac, we got 16 college basketball games in the NCAA tournament taking place on Thursday. What I'm going to do is we're going to read each of the pods. There's four or each of the time slots, I should say, four games in the first slots, four games in the second slot. And we're going to talk about what our favorite matchups are. If you got uh, all of your games going at once, which games that we think you should be watching as best you can. Uh, starting on the, the morning times on Thursday, these games are on Eastern time starting at 1215. We got Michigan State at oh, excuse me against Mississippi State nine versus oh, eight. They're so mad at you right now. <laughs> Oof, frustrated, right? Uh, that's in the West Region on CBS. Uh, Twenty five minutes later, Duquesne takes on BYU eleven versus six in the East Region on True TV. And then at one thirty, Akron the fourteen seed takes on the Blue Jays of Creighton and the three line in the Midwest on TNT. And then at two p.m., Long Beach State versus Arizona. Tommy Lloyd's team in the West on TBS. I'll start here. My matchup here is the the two versus the 15. I know those are not the usually the most close matchups. I'm guessing that we're going to see a closer result in the 8-9, but I love the Dan Monson, Tommy Lloyd connection here. Dan Monson, when the head coach, Ed Gonzaga, who actually hired Tommy Lloyd as an assistant coach, uh, and then he left for Minnesota. Tommy worked under Mark Few for 20 years before taking the job at Arizona. Now these two coaches get a chance to coach against each other. It's just a fun story. I expect Arizona to win, and I expect them to win by a good chunk but i'm excited to watch that one for that narrative andy i'm i am taking that eight nine game michigan state mississippi state michigan state is actually favored slightly one and a half points i'm a sucker for a good eight nine game chris jans's defense for the mississippi state bulldogs against tom Izzo in march really excited to see what will happen in that one andy let's go to the second viewing window the the first set of this is at 245 eastern expected obviously this round of four is all dependent on when the game's right before them play because it's in the mm -hmm. same pod 30 minutes later. So uh, right after that Michigan State-Mississippi State game is North Carolina versus Wagner, 116 in the West. That one's on CBS. In the East, True TV, we got the three-seed Illinois against 14 Moorhead State around 310, around 4 o'clock. South Carolina, the sixth seed against Oregon, the 11th seed in the Midwest on TNT. And then at 4.30-ish Eastern time, number seven, Dayton against number 10, Nevada in the West on Turner Broadcasting System. Is that what that's? <laughs> TBS. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Nevada Dayton. And I mentioned Nevada as like a my, if I had to pick a non-top three that's seed right. out of that region, uh, I got the Wolf Pack. But I, I I kind of don't like when mid-major teams get pitted against each other on these 7-10 seven, seven, lines. I distinctly remember Murray State and San Francisco getting pitted against each other, I think, three years ago. That was a frustrating game. Those are two teams that don't get at-large bids ever. And to put them against each other instead of letting them duke it out against a, a high-major team, a little frustrating. Granted, A-10 and the Mountain West are both pretty great conferences. They're both multi-bid leagues, so it's not as much of an issue here. But but I'm really excited about this game. Deron Holmes, what can he do against this Nevada defense? Yeah. Uh, I have the Wolfpack advancing, but I think that's going to be a really fun one. Yeah, tight game. Uh, Ken, or, um, Ken Pump. FanDuel has it Nevada, favored by a point and a half. Andy, my game is going to be South Carolina. We've talked about Lamont Paris. What a great job they've done coming from preseason being picked dead last in the SEC to tied for second in the SEC standings. They're taking on an Oregon team that's only here because they won the Pac-12 tournament. Mm -hmm. However, the Gamecocks are only favored by a point and a half in this game. Can Oregon's guys like uh, Jackson Shellstad and Cuisinard and, mm -hmm. and Folly Dante, can we see some stuff from those dudes or will Lamont Paris' team keep it rolling? I'm really excited for that game. Looking ahead to the third period of games, this is a, an incredibly exciting slate of games here. Honestly, I had a hard time picking which one's my favorite. Uh, you started out with the 10 seed, Colorado State, taking on Texas, the 7 seed in the Midwest on TNT. That one will start around 6.50 Eastern That one's time. actually definite because there's no games right before it. That is a definite 6.50 start time for that one. Uh, we also got at 7.10, Oakland, Kentucky, 14 versus 3 in the South on CBS. 
Uh, then you got the 12 5 here, Gonzaga, the five seed, taking on McNeese, Will Wade's team, the 12 seed, 725 in the Midwest on TBS. And then we got the another one of our 215s, Iowa State, the Cyclones, taking on the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State, a 215 matchup there. By the way, South Dakota State, one of I think a handful of teams, 10 or so, that had both teams in the men's and women's NCAA tournament. Shout out to Jackrabbits for doing that. That okay. game's at 735 on the East or the East region on True TV. Isaac, what's the game that stands out for you here? I'm going to go McNeese and Gonzaga. And I, here's why I want to go that game, Andy. A lot of people are picking McNeese as a popular upset pick, pairing it with Samford as an upset pick, by the way, over mm -hmm. Kansas, and then seeing that 12-13 matchup. Uh, you and I have talked about this a good bit. I don't know how much we've talked about it on air, but it just is not a good matchup. What what McNeese does well, Gonzaga can counteract that yeah. and doesn't have strength where Gonzaga has strength. I expect to see the uh, Bulldogs win, but mm -hmm. it is a 5-12. Yeah. It's always fun. We'll see what happens. What always about you? Gotta get, always got to have eyes on the 12-5 game yeah. as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, I'm going Colorado State, Texas. I, yeah, I, think, I think Colorado State pulls the upset here as much as it's it's a pretty close upset. Uh, I, Texas has gotten healthy. They're playing better basketball as of late. I love Max A. Smith, one of the 30 most prolific scorers in terms of total points in college basketball history. He's a really, really fun watch. Uh, Dylan DeSue being healthy is a huge storyline for them. But Isaiah Stevens is fantastic. Nico Medved's a really, really good coach. Give me the Rams uh, advancing in that game. And, and whether they do or not, I think that's going to be a tight, close, just fun contest to watch. All right, Andy, the last window of the night, and these ones will be contingent upon the ending of the third group of games. 920 estimated, 15 St. Peter's against number two, Tennessee. That's in the Midwest on TNT. Uh, back in the South region on CBS will be number 11, NC State, the auto bid out of the ACC against number six, Texas Tech. That's around 940. About 15 minutes after that expected is number 13, Samford against number four, Kansas. We're going to have to stay up late for that one, Andy. Not you, though, because Pacific time. Uh, that, that's prime time for you, that's my man. Dinner time for me. <laughs> That's Midwest on the TBS. And then expected to be the last tip of the night. Obviously, again, it depends on what everyone else does. Number 10 seed Drake against the seventh seeded Washington State team on uh, from the East bracket on True TV. Andy, clearly we're both picking St. Peter's over Tennessee as our most important game to watch because they're once again going to upset a two seed from the SEC, right? No, that's a joke. That's not the game we're picking. Andy, what are you going with? I'm going with another 7-10. I think I picked a 7-10 in three of these four regions. I didn't realize that uh, until the end here. But, yeah, give, give me Drake and Washington State. I, I think this is a really exciting game. Uh, Drake is only traveling uh, two hours to go to play this game in Omaha. Washington State's got to travel halfway across the country. A bit of a bummer for Kyle Smith's team there. But Drake, led by Tucker DeVries, one of the top ten leading scorers in the entire country. Uh, his dad, Darian DeVries, the head coach there. But I love this Washington State team. They lost a ton of talent from last year. They rebuilt and put this team in the spot to potentially to nearly win the Pac-12. That's an incredible accomplishment for Kyle Smith and their nerd ball analytic style that they play. Uh, these two teams matching up is really fun. I kind of joked about not putting mid-major teams against each other in Nevada and Dayton. Technically, this is not a mid-major game, but next year, if these two teams were to line up, it technically would be as, oh, as Washington yeah. State is yeah. going to be in the WCC next year. Uh, fun stuff. I think this is going to be a really fun matchup to watch. Dude, that's hilarious. I didn't think about that. Well, the reason you keep picking these 10-7s is because the 10 keeps being favored, as is yeah. the case again there with Drake. Andy, uh, I'm going with Samford in Kansas. If you've been with us this week, you know this is like the, the – upset that I'm all in yeah. on. I really am excited to see this game, but I, I did have a hard time picking that over the NC State Texas Tech game. I just think that one has a lot of good intrigue. So I'm very excited about this final viewing window of Thursday night. Well, Andy, it is the day. Today, it's all happening. Once again, folks, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Subscribe to the show, join our, our Discord community, all those things. But most importantly, we got to get out of here by saying apologies to the lawyer family. We got to say go Wildcats and all you other mascots out there. Let's give love to everybody today, Andy. And until tonight, when we go live after the games, make sure you tune in with us. Peace.